Warriors! October 18th, the U.S. economy could collapse, coming from the mouth of your government. My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach and crypto coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. Don't forget to click down below in the description. You can join our private warrior Academy, 120 day challenge access to my portfolio exit strategy and getting your shit together with our 120 day challenge, our free discord, free Facebook group. Let's get right into it. Warriors. Why is October? Why is October 18th? So important. Now I've been teaching you the game for about a year and a half now, and I want you to listen to what they say. I don't just watch these videos. I analyze them. I listen to what they say, and I make financial decisions based on where they're guiding us. When they tell us to look this way, there's a whole nother narrative going on this way. Now, remember, I believe in my personal opinion, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, but I believe they're all locked arm in arm behind the scenes, guiding us into the new financial system, which is a quantum financial system where banks are going to custody your cryptocurrency. Everything is going to operate on a blockchain. But what's happening is we're in the position where there could be a modern day bank run. And so they're making cryptocurrency look fraudulent, nefarious, used for illicit activities. But think about it, Warriors. Would you use Bitcoin or would you use cash? Cash is used way more for nefarious activities. So I'm teaching you to learn the game so you can't be played. So we're first going to watch this. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to narrate a couple videos here. There's going to be longer videos, but these are really important wars. Now, December, I've been talking about the debt ceiling before it was popular and everybody, everybody's talking about it now. The debt ceiling, the debt suspension, the debt suspension was raised in uh, 2019. Okay. So in 2019, they already were predicting a financial collapse coming, which was interesting, or excuse me, financial recession to be proper. And they raised the debt suspension from 22 trillion and they or they went set it at 22 trillion and they ran hot. We're sitting at 28 trillion right now. So remember our gross domestic product versus our debt is backwards. So where debt to income ratio is negative. So all the products, goods and services in America, if we sold all of them, we couldn't even pay off our debt. So America is buried in debt. We have to borrow money to pay social security, government benefits. And so if they do not raise the debt ceiling, you're going to hear it from their mouth, the mouth of babes, right? Oh, that wouldn't be kids. These are old decrepit people if you watch them. Um, but when you hear it from their mouths, they're going to tell you if you, we don't, if you don't give us more money, if we can't give us more money, Listen to what they say, though. If we can't print more money, we can't pay these things. They're literally purposely crashing the economy. Why? Because we're heading into a new economy. So we're going to watch this news, um, this news clip talking about Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, the hearing yesterday. <clears throat> then I'm going to do we're going to do a deeper one where Tommy goes in on Powell. But you need to listen to what he says and I'll narrate it and I'll stop and share with you my opinion. All right, let's, let's, let's watch this first clip. Chair Jerome Powell and the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling lawmakers today, you have just 20 days to either raise this or suspend the debt ceiling. And if you don't do that, America could face an economic crisis. It would be disastrous for the American economy, for global financial markets, and for millions of families and workers whose financial security would be jeopardized by delayed payments. Secretary Yellen added that a failure to raise the debt ceiling could halt child tax credit payments for 30 million families, delay Social Security payments for 50 million seniors, and result in a spike in unemployment. Time is running out for Democrats and Republicans to come to an agreement. They have until the 18th of October to raise the debt ceiling. And on a separate issue, they have only until this Thursday at midnight to fund the government. Okay, so they have this Thursday at midnight to fund the government. They have till the 18th to raise the debt ceiling. Now, we're going to watch a little bit more of this video, but, I mean, it's all political theater warriors. They're like, oh, we're victims. We're not going to be able to pay the benefits. You guys are the ones that printed us into oblivion. You're the one that put us in this position, right? But everybody sits back and watches a news station. Our government's fighting hard to protect us. News team coverage now. NBC's Leanne Caldwell on the political fight on the Hill. First, CNBC's Steve Leisman on today's economic warning. Steve? Shep, thanks. The Treasury Secretary is saying failing to raise the debt limit would deliver a one-two punch to the U.S. economy, a financial panic, 
and a recession. If that weren't enough, Yellen said it would do long-term damage to the premier status of the dollar in the global economy and undermine the faith and credit of the U.S. government. Now, you could yawn and say Treasury secretaries always serve up these kind of warnings in the final days before the government runs out of cash, except for one thing economically. These dire predictions probably are right. The Treasury Secretary says government coffers run dry October 18th, as you said. This comes. OK, so what he's saying there, Warriors, is, yes, they say that, that we this is political theater. They say the same damn thing every single time. But this time they're right. If they don't raise the debt ceiling and they don't allow them to print more money, guess what? They won't be able to pay veterans benefits. They will not be able to pay Social Security. You won't be getting your UBI checks sitting back ordering your Uber Eats, Warriors. This is true. If they do not raise the debt ceiling, the economy will go into a full recession, right? So now we have them raise, they're going to raise the debt ceiling. I'm going to, I'm going to have you listen to what Senator Toomey says and says, dude, you're going to do whatever the fuck you want anyways. So just do it. They're, they're literally crashing the economy wars. This is what I'm telling you. Something massive is coming. As the economy is dealing with several headwinds, there's the Delta variant, which Powell said was slowing the economic recovery. Yellen noted the economic recovery was fragile but rapid and that the Delta variant was suppressing the speed of the rebound on inflation. Powell saying the effects were larger and longer lasting than anticipated, but would begin to fall back. Yellen saying in her view, inflation at the end of the year would probably be close to 4% or double what the Fed's looking for. Oof. It's Steve, uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren really laid into Chairman Powell today. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren is, is known for not mincing her words, but she surprised even some in her own party today when what she said about Fed Chair Jay Powell on the issue of banking regulation. Over and over, you have acted to make our banking system less safe, and that makes you a dangerous man to head up the Fed, and it's why I will oppose your renomination. Warren accused Powell of weakening new rules put in place after the financial crisis to avoid future taxpayer bailouts. Now, Powell disputed the charge and pointed out that banks have more money, well, essentially in the bank and are safer than they have been in history. Back Why do they have more money in the bank and safer than in history? Because they're printing it to oblivion. Cancel loan effect. The rich people are getting the money first. And by the time it gets to you, your money is inflated. Warriors, that's why I'm running to assets, 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 crypto, silver, Right. Buying corporations that are low debt, high capital, high profitability. I haven't bought those businesses yet, but I'll be going through my boot camp and buying those very soon. OK, so let's go into the next one. This one's going to take a little bit longer, but I want to narrate it from my perspective. I'm sure you've seen these clips all over TikTok, but this is important to listen to what he says. Warriors, you are literally part of a th you're sitting there in a theater watching theater play out on a spending binge that will certainly require more borrowing to pay for all that spending. Okay, so he says the government goes on a spending binge, which is going to require more borrowing. We have to borrow more money, borrow more money to do more spending. Vicious cycle. Our Democrats have a spending binge underway. They are threatening to dramatically expand that. And if they get their way, that will certainly necessarily involve more borrowing than we would otherwise need. The Democrats have chosen to ignore our warnings about this excessive spending, but they want us to vote to raise the debt ceiling in order to permit the massive spending increases that they're planning. OK, so this is important. So they went on this spending spree, right? They're just running up the debt. And so they need to go to the Republicans and ask for them to raise the debt ceiling so they can go on their spending spree still. But listen to what he says. I would just remind everyone, just as the Democrats have the procedural ability to pass this spending on their own, as they intend to, they have the exact same procedural ability to raise the debt ceiling on their own, which they inevitably will have to end up doing. So he just told you. They're, they're literally, they're going to do it anyway. So don't even worry about this December 18th bullshit that they're saying. They're going to raise the debt ceiling. And why? What are they? They're literally purposely crashing the economy, Warriors. Think about that. They got all of you guys looking this way. They're going to keep the UBI going. If I was on this uh, Coinbase uh, thing last night on Twitter and they were talking about UBI, 
They were talking about UBI wars. So he's sharing with you guys. It doesn't matter what the Republicans say. They're going to raise the debt ceiling. They're going to start keep buying junk bonds from companies that are good zombie companies that aren't going to survive. And at some point when they're going to pull the life support plug is when they're ready and they're in the quantum financial system and they can start kicking the can down the road in the cryptocurrency and blockchain era. So once they get a set with, with the CBDC, they can monitor everything. Whereas th this is all that's why billionaires are running to assets. Bitcoin. Trust me. Mr. Powell, earlier this year, there were certainly sectors of our economy, especially the price sensitive, uh, the, the sectors sensitive to reopening, experienced pretty dramatic but largely temporary price spikes. It seems to me now we're seeing a broader, more troubling kind of inflation. Input prices are soaring across the board, raw materials, electrical components, energy, and consumer expectations. <clears throat> seem to have internalized this. The New York Fed's most recent survey shows that they expect 5.2 percent inflation over the coming year. Despite this and all the growth that we've talked about, as you point out, the Fed is still buying $120 billion in securities every month. And I guess my question is, doesn't the inflation we're seeing now seem broader and more structural in nature than the brief blip we saw, say, in used car prices earlier this year? Yeah, yes, I think it's fair to say that it is. The, um, uh, mainly what we've seen is that the, the supply side restrictions that, that are so much at the heart of the inflation we're seeing have not only not gotten better, they've actually in some cases gotten worse. Look at the car companies, look at the, look at the ships uh, dock, or, you know, with their anchors down outside of Los Angeles. And this is really uh, a mismatch between demand and supply, and we need those supply blockages to alleviate, to abate, uh, before inflation can come down. We, we do believe that it will, but... Um, okay, think about that. What created the supply blockages? Go do your research, Warriors. What created the supply blockages? It was like a forced inflation, right? All of a sudden, we have the C word. We have all this stuff going on. They lock us down in our houses. They take away jobs. It forces a supply management problem. They're able to raise inflation, right? They're able to raise the cost of your products, goods, and services to bring money into the economy as they print money. So they give you the money. They want it back in the economy. They give you the money. They want it back in the economy. They're tricking you, warriors. You never got a pay raise. Um, most, however, if you look at measured inflation and what's contributing to it, most of it is still from a very small uh, category of, of, uh, of uh, items. But, but it's considerably broader than it was. And I would also point out, and I know you're aware of this, but the Fed's projections of inflation have consistently been off. They've consistently been low. And at some point, I think we need to acknowledge that this is not playing out the way um, I think the Fed had hoped. Let me shift the topic to a central bank digital currency. Um, okay, so now they're going from, right, the debt, the printing. Now they're going into CBDCs. Now, every time they've met, this has come up, Warriors, lately. This has come up. This is telling you where we are going. Coinbase is now accepting your direct deposits into their accounts. Think about that in two weeks. Um, so I'm increasingly intrigued by the opportunities that a properly designed central bank digital currency could provide to the U.S., to name a few, um, instant zero-cost payments, interoperability and programmability with smart contracts, international competitiveness all come to mind. But getting the design correct, getting it right, is essential. For instance, the privacy of Americans has to be respected. We shouldn't design a central bank digital dollar that allows the government to spy on Americans every transaction. And the Fed is certainly not suited to be a retail bank, and so we sh certainly shouldn't try to turn it into one. Uh, in my view, privately issued digital currencies should be able to coexist with a digital dollar if we go down that road. And private sector developers certainly should be able to innovate either on or in an in a interoperable fashion with a digital dollar. So I'm not asking you to opine on any of these things, but it seems to me the decision about whether or not to go down this road is transformational. And there are very, very important and sensitive design issues that would have to be resolved. So the decision to go down this road is transformable. Now, listen to what Jerome Powell says, Warriors. This is coming. 
It's not coming right now, Warriors. It's going to be. That's why I keep saying 2025. We're still going to have the massive bull market. Then you're going to have a huge pullback for three years. That's when I always bring up Crypto, crypto Mason because I want to give him credit. He said that's when people's retirements are going to be made. It's not this bull run, Warriors. It's the next three years by 2025. Trust me, I'll be a consistent YouTuber. You'll hear from me every single day till the next 2025. And then that's when retirement accounts are going to be made. So I think that ought to be done in a transparent process with political accountability, which is to say with congressional input. Could you comment on how important you think it is to have congressional authorization if we're going to go down the road of a digital dollar? I, I'd be glad to. Um, and by the way, I, I agree. This, this is critical work that we want to take forward. So the, the laws that were the relevant parts of our law were written long before digital finance was a thing. And OK, boom. Did you hear what he just said? The laws are written well before digital finance was a thing. I wanted you to hear that. Hold on to that thought. And while and, there, and a central bank digital currency could take many forms, it is possible that under some forms you'd be able to make an argument that it would be authorized under current law. But I, I think this is such a fundamental issue. It would be ideal if this were to be a product of broad consultation and ultimately authorizing legislation from Congress. Okay, so did you hear what he said? They're literally working to figure out regulation and how to bring in new Howey tests. How do we regulate this? Well, let me share with you how you regulate it. What you do is you throw out an SEC lawsuit against a company that has been meeting with the SEC since its inception and has been called the banker coin the whole time. And that's why people like us who are invested in XRP, you know, the Bitcoin maximalists and all the people out there were like, oh, it's a banker coin. But now they're all getting involved in XRP. Don't date it. Don't trade it. Just buy it. Right. Well, why are you buying it if you don't like it? Blah, blah, blah. Because they know it's going to make them a lot of money because I think everybody innately is in here to make some money and build some generational wealth. So let's get rid of that part of it that's why i don't pick sides so listen to this words here's what's happening the sec versus ripple lawsuit is all by design to bring in a new howie test the shots fired at coinbase is to let exchanges know we're coming for you we're going to regulate the living shit out of it here's proof wars this is my proof you can question me down below kraken pays 1.2 million dollar fine after settling charges with the cftc member gary gensler came from the cftc MIT professor, now the head of the SEC. You don't think they all communicate, Warriors? You don't think they're all connected behind the scenes? You know, Kraken gets a little uh, slap on the wrist. They pay their fine. Boom, done. Easy peasy out the door. Tether, cryptocurrency firm Tether and BitMEX agree to pay $18.5 million fine to, in New York probe. Behind the scenes, they're all rubbing elbows. Tether has some issues going on. We say it's, you know, whatever the new printing machine. And boom, they slap them on the wrist. They pay their fines. Okay, we go on and on. SEC ordered blockchain company to pay 24 million penalty for unregistered ICO September 30th, 2019. So why do these cases get settled so quickly and so efficiently, Warriors? Why is that? Why do these cases get settled so quickly, so efficiently, slap on the wrist, settle out of court? Let's give you your money, honey, and let's move on. They're all designed to say, hey, listen, let's clear up the regulation. Let's have some clarity here, right? Well, why is this SEC lawsuit dragging out so heavily for Ripple XRP? Hmm. Could it be to FUD the retail investors out because they know that XRP is going to be the bridge currency for the world and the people who hang on like a tick on a dog are innately? Uh, some people say we could be uh, a government buyout. They could say we switch it to a state. There's all kinds of things they say. But the fact is, why would you dip out of the cryptocurrency that is in a major battle with the SEC, a political theater that potentially could have massive, massive growth opportunity? Think about that. Think about that for just a moment. Why is the SEC versus Ripple case taking so long? And why is it going so deep? And why is it dragging out during a bull market, right? Whereas it's all by design. They're sitting in front of the Senate. They're going through these hearings. They're pretending that the economy is going to collapse. And the Democrats are saying, hey, we're going to save the world. We need to raise this debt ceiling. We need to get money back to the people, right? Whereas it's not for you. None of this is for you, okay? You have to understand the game's been like this for a very long time. There's no, it doesn't matter who's in party. It doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat. It's the same thing. They are not the operators of the actual economy. 
The president is not the operator of the economy. Jerome Powell isn't really making the decisions for the economy. There's a much bigger picture at play. It's the people who control the money, control the information, control the people. So what we do know is we're switching into a new monetary system. So we're all walking a delicate tightrope and trying to figure out what cryptocurrencies are going to be here. Okay, that's a fact. Okay, 99% of cryptos are going to get wiped out. The ones that will be left are fundamental cryptocurrencies. They're not going to let this, you know, let, you know, uh, people make $150,000 a week and they're not going to let all this stuff happen worse. So this is your time to, to, to get those big profits. It's, it's going to change dramatically when regulation comes in. Promise you, warriors. People try not to pay their taxes and avoid their taxes. They're going to come after you, warriors. It's just what it is. So it's about understanding, taking a fundamental approach to investing. This is not financial advice, but I'm about 98% crypto right now. And as I go through this next bull market coming up in days now, right, days now, I'm going to be transitioning into wealth preservation. I also have you seen many times I'm going to be buying corporations and I'm going to be diversifying across cryptocurrency, um, stable coins, precious metals and buying corporations and hopefully in the future buying uh, multifamily properties. I'm going to stack my family up with real estate, with precious metals, with cryptocurrencies that I think are going to stay here. That's what I'm doing, Warriors. But if you want to join our private Warrior Academy, you can click the link down below. You can do our private free Discord. Uh, there's a free Discord down there as well. But when you go in the Academy, you get access to my portfolio, exit strategy, multiple crypto calls a week, deep dive call on Thursday into the cryptocurrency, into the stuff we can't talk about on here. Uh, what else do we got? We got our 120 day challenge to get your shit together, subconscious mind programming, goal setting, vision board creation, um, nutrition, workouts. There's nothing like it in history. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Do me a favor. Make sure you share this video. It's not getting the reach that it should because of the topics that I talk about. So send it to your friends and family. I'll keep making the complex simple. My name is Coach JB. I am the top health, mindset, and crypto coach in the world. Warriors, rise. Get your shit together. Let's go.